Welcome. Welcome back. I'm the Doc Bob Lee for 107.5 WBLS in Bronx Nets Open. Hey, listen, our next guest is the mezzo-soprano opera singer, as well as a voice and piano teacher. She joins us to speak about how the pandemic has impacted her ability to do what she loves. So please welcome to the show, Linda Calazzo. Linda, how are you? Hi, I'm great. Thank you for having me. Oh, I see you have a piano in the back. Are you going to play some music for us or something? I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'm pretty rough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So tell us about this elastic and luxurious voice that you have. Oh, oh, thank you. Um, I sing opera. I, I started singing opera by by chance. I uh, auditioned for Fiera Luis La Guardia High School when I was 13, and I got in for singing. And since then, I mean, La Guardia High School requires that everyone studies classical repertoire and art song and opera. Yeah. And so I just realized I could sing and the teachers really supported me. They gave me a lot of awards and scholarships and really pushed me. And so eventually I just was kind of like, all right, I guess I got to study this for college because it's something special to me and it's something I, I can do well. And then it just uh, took off from there and I've been performing ever since. But in the area of mezzo soprano? Yeah. So mezzo soprano means medium soprano. Mezzo means medium in Italian. Uh, just hey, means, Matt, so hey, yeah, yeah, I got it. <laughs> yeah, it just means that like my voice, it's not super high. It can get high, but it's more comfortable in the middle um, yeah, area, yeah. and that it's it's kind of rich and full, and it, it has like a a dark sound. Yeah, I I can hear your speaking voice. I like that too. That's, <laughs> a, that's, that's nice to listen to. How has the pandemic impacted your ability to perform and collaborate with uh, other artists and singers? Um, I'm not going to lie, it's been really, really hard. Um, I've been able to get by. Um, I've been fortunate enough to get a couple of gigs here and there virtually and one in person where I had to wear a mask the whole time and the, the mic was underneath the mask. Yeah. Um, virtually, it's been very challenging. Um, for example, you know, I, as, an, as a singer, before COVID, I would typically always work with a pianist and a accompanist. Um, someone that I would go to their house for rehearsal, or I would go rent a space in Manhattan for rehearsal. Uh -huh. It's no longer like that anymore because of the pandemic. And um, I've, I've had to use my phone and a stereo instead to play accompaniment, like, like a karaoke track in order to, yeah. to perform. And for opera, that's a little bit complicated and difficult. Um, so that has been um, a big, uh, a big inhibition for me is it, it prevents me from yeah. fully performing like with as much uh engagement as i used to not not being able to perform in front of an audience a, a live in-person audience has also been um hard because yeah. that's a really important part to to performing in general and and to me to feel what the audience is feeling to see their engagement to um to interact with them when i perform um yeah it's been it's been hard, but I'm fortunate enough that I've still been able to perform and, and figure this out. I just hope that um, with the vaccine, like eventually we will be able to have performances as frequently as yeah. we do. Are you going to take the vaccine? I already did. So oh. I took the first dose. Yeah, I, I since I'm a teacher, um, I was able to get it. I qualify as like in the one B category. You're a frontline worker. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was able to schedule an appointment for Yankee Stadium and I went, I think on Monday. So it's been about like four days and I, it's just my first dose. My second dose is March 1st. Um, and I just got very, very lucky because before going to Yankee Stadium, I had tried scheduling in other places in the Bronx and they were canceled. Like I scheduled an appointment for a place yeah. really close to my house and it was canceled because of the shortage. So um, it was just really nice to just be able to go and get the first dose. And I, I, I scheduled it as soon as it was released that Yankee Stadium was opening as a COVID vaccination center. Yeah. Did they tell you which one you were taking, Pfizer or Moderna? The Pfizer. The Yankee Pfizer? Stadium provides the Pfizer, yeah. Yeah, and how did you feel afterwards? Um, There were a couple of symptoms, but they weren't super uh, intense. One was the my arm really, really hurt. I got it in this arm, I saw the Band-Aid. Yeah. Um, it really, really hurt. Like I, I like to sleep on this side, the shoulder, and I couldn't do that because yeah. it was so painful um, on the bed. And um, 
I, I think another one was exhaustion. Like I was, for example, yesterday I was really, really tired. And yeah. the nurse told me, the nurse who, who gave me the, the vaccine told me, she was like, you might feel really tired. So um, that was one of the, I think that was one of the symptoms I had yeah. yesterday. But well, other than that, it's, I mean, I've been- my eyes. It looks like your, your face is changing with <laughs> It's like, no, it's not doing that. <laughs> Turning into an alien. <laughs> no, but that's that's great. So you're scheduled to take the second one. Mm -hmm. And um, from then, they, you still have to wear a mask and everything. That's what they tell yeah. us. Of yeah, course. Because yeah. you can still get it and give it, but it just won't send you to the hospital. Right. But you can send others to the hospital. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. I've read about that. Um, so I'm... Obviously, when I'm not home, I try to wear a mask as much as I can. But well, it didn't affect your voice, though. No, and fu funny enough, um, the day that I got the vaccine, I had a gig in the evening for my oh, no. my queens. Yeah, my my. But old... it made you worry about it, right? What's this thing? Yeah, I was, I was kind of like, oh my god, like, what if I'm really tired for the performance? <laughs> yeah, and it went fine, and, and and I ended up like putting it on my social media, like I I did a fine performance, and I had my vaccine the same day. It's not a big yeah, deal. Yeah. I was okay. It didn't change your voice. It didn't do anything. Yeah, it didn't no, hinder your. It didn't do anything. Your ability to sing. Yeah. What did you in the performance? What did you sing? I sang. Mm -hmm. uh, Cruda Sorte by Rossini, and I sang the re the really popular aria Avanera by um, Bizet from Carmen. Can you so touch us with the aria Avanera? Okay. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Oh, Very good. Awesome. Beautiful voice. It's exactly what they say. You have the, the elastic and luxurious voice. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Beautiful. Where do we go from here? Can we get some CDs out or do you have a CD out? That um, I, I was fortunate enough before COVID to do my first professional recording. Um, and it was with the Mimesis Ensemble, which is located in Manhattan. So I do have um, one album that I'm a part of one track um, and it's on the Mimesis Ensemble website to purchase. Uh -huh. um, I think it's called, the album is called Dancing Circles in the Night um, and you can purchase a copy at mimesisensemble.org. Mm -hmm. That's great. It's fantastic. Wonderful voice. Go ahead. We applaud you all day, every day, 24 hours a day. Yay. <laughs> I just made Thank that. you. But really great. What do you tell other people about the, the vaccine? Um, because a lot of people have second thoughts and they want to see, I'm going to follow you to see if you're going to get sick and things of that nature. I mean, I'm just very um, transparent about the symptoms or the side effects I've received so far, um, how I feel, you know, I just, I'm just trying to be as transparent as I can. Like social media is, can be pretty powerful in that sense where like before I got the vaccine, I was seeing the other essential workers that I'm friends with and the other colleagues and peers that I know post about their process, what the symptoms were like. And that kind of made me less afraid because I was afraid too. Yeah. I was very, very scared. Um, so when I tell, when I talk to someone about the vaccine, I just tell them like, Hey, I, I took it and it really wasn't that bad. Um, like for example, yesterday I was having a conversation with a student. She was saying, I'm really afraid of needles. I'm really afraid of the side effects that like, um, cause she felt that she was at risk of getting a, a side of a serious side effect. And I just told her, I was like, it, it really wasn't that bad for me. I mean, I'll keep you posted. Uh -huh. Um, I, I never try to force people because it's a personal decision at the end of the day. Um, but I do tell them that I did my own research before getting it because I was scared. Um, I did my own research. I spoke to people who, who had gotten it. Um, and I think the biggest thing that made me ha like get it was that there was kind of no, no time to think. Um, unfortunately, the vaccinations, the, the scheduled appointments were taken so fast that I, yeah. just, I had to just do it. 
if I really wanted it because um, if I had if I spent time thinking, then I wouldn't have gotten the appointment. Oh, good. Where can we come down and, and watch you sing? You have anything coming up? Um, unfortunately, no. My my gigs at right now are private. I'm I'm performing for Princeton University on Friday for um, virtually, their, right? Yeah, their youth yeah. program, but that is a private um, performance. Um, but you can definitely watch me on, on YouTube. Um, just look up Linda Colazzo Mezzo Soprano. You can follow me on Facebook. Just look up Linda Colazzo Mezzo Soprano on Instagram. My, um, IG handle is Linda Ritza, R-I-T-Z-A. Yeah. And, um, I do have a, a future performance coming up. That's, that was already pre-recorded with the Metropolitan uh -huh. Opera Guild. So, that should be released soon on their Facebook page and Instagram, I believe. So um, definitely check that out. That that performance was in particular very special because I get I got to speak about Latin American music in opera, and I got yeah. to perform an Ecuadorian piece. I'm half Ecuadorian. Um, that's like really near and dear to my heart, and um, I got to speak about it and sing the, the half Ecuadorian and half Italian. No, so I'm half Ecuadorian, half Puerto Rican. My, oh, last okay. name, my last name is, I guess, yeah, it's it's pretty Italian, um, but it's it's actually a Puerto Rican last name. Like a lot of apparently, it's a little bit more common in Puerto Rico to hear Colazo. In Spanish, we say Collazo. Um, yeah, or you can say Collazo. Like there are many different ways to say to say my last name, but Colazo is the easiest way. Um, and and yeah, I'm fully I'm fully Latina. Well, thank you, thank you so much for being uh, with us today. You're very, very pleasant. You have a wonderful voice and we really, really appreciate you. You have to come back. Of course, yeah, I'm more than happy to come yeah. um, back. Especially when we open up our studios, you have to come back and do a live performance for us. That would be oh, so I would lovely. love to do that. I would love to do that. Yeah, well, that would be fun. You are invited, you're always welcome, okay? Oh, thank and, you so much. And good luck in everything that you're doing and God bless you. Thank you, thank you very much. Linda Colazzo, she's Linda Colazzo, the mezzo-soprano voice and piano teacher. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, we'll take a break. I've got more next. <laughs>